You saw the thumbnail and the title. You know why you're here. We're going to go ahead and get straight into it. First things first. This is what I've used to accomplish this whole project, minus the lift. Obviously, you may or may not have that, and that's okay. If you don't, add two jack stands to this list. This is the tools I use to accomplish this job. WD-40, it's in a sure shot can, just a normal can of it is fine. Two bottle jacks, they don't have to necessarily be 20 tons. I have a piece of wood here that goes under one of, this one, under one of these bottle jacks just because that bottle jack is very short. A three pound mini sledge or three pound hammer, uh, normal hammer, a couple of screwdrivers, a uh, flat, I guess you'd call it a chisel style, um, screwdriver, not screwdriver, sorry, chisel tool, a pry, flat pry bar, a large sledgehammer. It doesn't have to necessarily be a, a big one like that, but it will make it easier. A uh, couple of, well, you know, may or not, may, may not need pliers. I just used them to straighten some stuff out. Specifically this, this is actually a old um, bushing that the seal, the wheel seal itself rides on. And all I did was simply grind a little bit of it out and make it a little smaller so I can use it and this um, flat punch in order to drive my new bushing on. Small screwdriver like we talked about before. The uh, linemans will actually play into this, kind of getting it flat and exactly what you want. A two by four or other wood variant so that you can drive your new seal back on. An impact is handy, but you don't have to do it that way. Obviously you can use a uh, ratchet. Used a one inch and also a 15 16th. And of course need our new seal that's the Bobcat part number if you have an S250. And again, the Bobcat part number if you have an S250. Probably the S300 as well. I'm, just, I'm sure it shares over on some of them, but that's the bushing. So wheel seal and bushing. The parts, as far as that goes, don't get hung up on it if that's not the right one for yours. Obviously just go to the Bobcat website, punch in the serial number of your machine, and it will be pretty easy for you to dictate or narrow down uh, what parts you actually need. I like to live dangerously. Use a chrome socket on an impact. Hopefully your machine's not as rusty as ours and you don't have to deal with this. I do want you to keep in mind that if your tires are foam filled, they are going to be very heavy. So keep that in mind whenever it's time to take these off. Now, ours has three bolts in the middle and those three bolts are simply holding this giant, very thick washer on. And that's what holds our wheel hub on. Obviously they're pressed on and they're very tight. However, this keeps it to where it can't wiggle off. Now these won't be on nearly as tight as the lug nuts were. I'm not sure why, but just... and we're not going to take them all the way out either. Maybe just a smidge more. Yeah. All right. So this can move and that's what we want because this is what retains this hub on there. We're going to have to put two jacks on the back of this in order to press it off. So it's going to be odd looking. I know it. The reason it's like this. So for instance, my jack obviously pumps from down here. So I cannot put it the right way, which would have this base against there in order to actually use the jack because the pump will be on the wrong end. It would be up top and it wouldn't draw any fluid. So that's why that's flipped around. You can do it however you want, whatever way works for you. If you have two jacks that are in the opposite orientation, it will work great. If not, you may have to do what I did. I did this on the other side and I had no problems. Not saying that you won't have any problems. Our machine is probably rustier than most and 
mainly because it came from an aluminum foundry. So it got abused more, sat outside. It's a low hour machine, surprisingly, but obviously was not really all that well taken care of. All the wheel seals on this one leak, and that's why we're fixing them. But I do want you to be aware that that could be a problem for you. So just plan accordingly. I know this is an odd angle, but that's just kind of the best I can do. We did leave the front piece on there, remember that, because we don't want this hub or the jacks, for instance, to go flying when they have, say, 10 tons of pressure pushing out. So all we're going to do now is we're going to jack them up evenly. <laughs> There it is. So remember what we talked about, about leaving these on here, and that's why. If we didn't, this would have went flying across. Obviously, my dog wasn't there then, but it would have went flying across and hit something. The jacks would have went flying with it, so we don't want to do anything like that. Continue pressing it off like that. We'll go a little bit on this side too. Ah, that's good on your concrete. You can see right here that this is obviously a mess and it shouldn't look like this. And if it does look like this, it's a pretty good indication of why your seal has failed. Probably one of the better things I can do is just soak this in WD-40, not only to help rid the rust, but also it'll kind of cake any of the material and it'll make it to where it's less likely to just go in because I'm gonna have to punch a hole through this to get it out. Now there is a bearing behind here, so if you hammer this in and like the seal goes in, like you've seen it go in a little bit, fine. But if it goes in too far, remember that when the screwdriver comes through, it's going to be right against the bearing. So you may not want to pry around a whole lot. may want to put something below here to catch any leaking. Now this is what the behind the seal is going to look like. And you can see that there's a bearing back there. Obviously you can see it very clearly. You can see the rollers there. Now right in front of it right here, this is actually what the seal itself rides on. And it's kind of like a speedy sleeve. It's like this from the factory. I'm going to show you how to cut that out and put a new one in. Because if you put this, like especially in my case, as rough as this is, it's just going to tear the wheel seal again. Now what I want to do is I want to take that out, but I want to do it without damaging this surface or obviously the surface under that wheel seal. Because if I damage that, then it'll just give a spot for the fluid itself to leak past it. And so it'd go past the seal and that speedy sleeve essentially. Now this is the part that's going to seem a little odd. This is just a normal um, Sawzall blade. And all I've done is I've cut this little end off right here. And you're going to see why here in a second, because if it were this thick all the way through, I would not be able to fit this blade where I need it to be. All we're going to do is we're going to go in here like this. And we're just going to cut. Oops. Good cut going here, maybe. There we go. It's starting to go.
it's just like that, how we just broke it, makes it where we can pop it off. And you can see on here, we didn't damage that surface. This is just WD-40 and we're just spraying it on there, mainly so we can wipe more of that dirt and debris off to keep it out of anywhere else inside this bearing or the axle housing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some real light sandpaper. This is a 600 grit sandpaper. And we're going to put this all the way around the axle best we can. We're going to get all that dirt where it was kind of crusted up on that lip. We'll get as much of that out of there as we can. Oh yeah, much better. And that's going to make it where it's easier for us to slide this over it. Well, not this, but the, <clears throat> the actual new one, the new sleeve. And we're going to put that back on there just to keep everything nice and prettier, I guess. Now what I've done is I've heated these bushings up so that they will be very easy to slide on there, or at least as easy as they can be. Alright, so to put that on and attempt to not damage it, all we did was we took the old one that we actually broke off of it essentially, right? We cut the ends so that we could squeeze it together a little more so that we'd be able to get it to fit tighter and ensure that we didn't have, um, you know, like it sticking out or even a jagged edge from where we broke it up against the new one. We took this, obviously this is just a punch and also, or sorry, not a punch, but more of a, a chisel from a, a air hammer. And we've, I ground the end down flat. That way I could get this against this and be able to hammer on this and disperse all that pressure across a larger section. Otherwise, what you would have is essentially digging in to one spot. Like when you So now what I want to do with this is I'm going to do the same thing again. Use WD-40, get it as kind of as lubed up as we can. And we're going to do the same thing with this seal just to ensure that we don't rip it. Because obviously if this new seal were to catch an edge, so we've got it lubed up as well. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, the purpose to that, like we mentioned, we want it to, to slide over this and not catch. Looks like it's going to go in pretty easy. Let me grab a board. And there's our new seal. Now that's pretty much it for this process as far as actually changing the seal over. Now on this, it's not difficult and it really didn't take that much time. Overall from start, so actually taking the wheel off, cleaning everything up, getting everything kind of situated and removing the old one, putting the new ones on, 
I'm only probably about 30 minutes total into this. So by the time I put that key in and I put the wheel back on, I'm going to say probably somewhere around 45 minutes. So I would say for the first one, probably an hour. And then from there on, you're going to get much quicker just because it's the same process repeated over and over. So I hope you found this helpful. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy this little clip about our farm and uh, kind of see what else we do around here. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. I just thought of something. It all makes sense now why you bought me a new weld helmet for Christmas. Why? So you could use it. It'd be like me buying you a fishing pole for your birthday. You, you did buy me a... a That's pole. not important. <laughs>